connected on YouTube, yeah. Okay, I think we're live. We're, we're testing out a bunch of technology I'm right now. Live. We're going live on Facebook. Okay, we're, we're going live on many channels right now, so hopefully everybody could join in. We're testing a lot of different technologies so we can stream to many places and you guys can all get a chance to watch. Um, so that's exciting. Jeff Bardo has been at the helm working hard trying to get all this streaming stuff going because we've never done this before. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, if you're joining on Instagram, um, it's going to look sideways for you. So maybe turn your phone and that way you'll get like the biggest view possible. Um, look, I added a plant to my desk in an ice cream bowl because I haven't planted it yet. <laughs> so it looks a little prettier and I've got my tea in my Art Everyday mug, which I got at the MoMA not too long ago. So yeah, I hope my table is more interesting for you now. <laughs> um, all right, so I think we're good to go. Are we good to go? Uh, we're live on a couple, so we are good to go. All right, well, we're just gonna get started. I'm sure I'll repeat some of the stuff at the beginning, but um, so today I'm gonna be drawing on my iPad and Procreate. Um, I've been working on the Making Art Every Day prompts, which this month the theme is alphabet plus illustration. So each day you're doing a different letter and illustrating something to go along with it. You can choose a theme if you want and um, <laughs> you can choose a theme if you want and then um, the ultimate goal is to print it all into a book at the end of the month. And I'm partnering with Mixed Books, which I'm going to show you a little bit later, like how I've been kind of planning out my book using their software. So, um, and I have a discount code for them, which I will share in my email newsletter uh, this weekend. So if you want to sign up for my email newsletter, um, you can go to bardobrush.com and just sign up for uh, the email newsletter. And then you'll also get all the making art every day prompts uh, along with some motivation and links to tutorials and stuff like that. So cool. Well, let's get started. Um, I am kind of doing these out of order. I started late and I'm finishing early. So I'm trying to get a lot done in a short amount of time so I can get the book ordered to show it off to you guys before the end of the month. Um, so I'm doing quite well. I think I'm done with 22 illustrations out of 26. I have four more to finish. So that's very exciting for me. I'm like so close. Um, I did a bunch more last night. Yesterday we together, we illustrated, I, I illustrated this and you guys watched, uh, but I did zoo and we did all these different animals. I've been using my gouache paint box set to illustrate this entire book, which I just updated like a month ago and it's like my new favorite set. Um, so yeah, and I've done a few more, which I'll show you the new ones I did at, maybe at the end. But today, we're going to be doing waffles. Somebody said some food illustration would be fun, so that's why I'm doing waffles today. Um, my theme, I don't know if I mentioned that, but it's things my kids like, and I'm going to print it and give it to a book, or print it to a book and give it to them as a gift. So all the illustrations have to do with things that they love. Waffles is definitely one of them. Pancakes, probably equally so, but I had something else for pee. So, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. So I have this really rough, uh, very rough thumbnail sketch that I like we, blew up to be- a little wider for Insta is the only problem. A little wider, oh, technical things, what do we need? This is what Insta looks like. Oh, okay, so it is still sideways. Okay, okay, sorry Instagram, let's, let's see. Hold on, I need a shift. Just come up a little bit is what we end up needing to do. Hmm. Like should, yeah. Let's, okay. Sorry, Instagram, if it looks a little off for you. I think I need to center this. And then maybe we'll be okay. Is that better? Uh, I mean, it shows most of that. It's not all of that if you are Okay. All right, let me just adjust my iPad. We'll figure this out maybe so we can get it going better for Instagram in the next video, but... For now, it'll kind of be this cropped version. Um, sorry, Instagram. <laughs> um, so we're drawing waffles today. So this is a, a thumbnail sketch um, that I drew and like blew up to be the size of my canvas. I had planned out my entire book with this 
Um, I planned out all the letters, what they would be, and then I started to do little tiny, tiny thumbnail sketches for each one. Um, so that's where all that is coming from. And then I saved that and I imported it to larger canvases. I'm using 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. So now I can start like an actual initial sketch here. So that's what I'm gonna do. So um, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm going to reduce the opacity of the like rough sketch layer. And I'm going to be using, again, my gouache paint box set to do the whole thing. That's what I'm gonna do in the whole book in. I include a pencil or a brush called light pencil and that's what I use for all the sketches. That's why I include it so you have something to sketch with ready to go in the set and it's a really great sketching brush. So, and then I'll choose like a middle gray. That's usually how I do my sketches. So, um, I'm, I'm just gonna start kind of sketching this out. Waffles, today's gonna be interesting because waffles are challenging <laughs> to draw. Uh, they have all those like little kind of pockets, I don't know, little crevices in them. So that's kind of, you know, that's gonna require a lot of shading, but maybe I can, I always try to find a way to like simplify it as much as I can, mostly to make it easier on myself. I don't really do too much realism in my artwork. I love a stylized look, like the more simple and effortless, the better. Uh, if you can communicate something with just a line, like I am into that. So we'll see how this goes. Waffles are gonna be interesting. So I'm kind of like stacking them at two different angles, trying to get like a 3D thing happening. So just starting with some basic like flat cubes. And then I've got a plate, which I kind of decided would go off the edge of the frame. Though maybe it's not high enough to look like it's actually sitting on the plate. Might be better. If I can just imagine how it connects all the way around, might be better to get the right angles and stuff. So, and as you guys are watching along, feel free to ask questions. Um, I'm definitely here to answer them. Uh, Jeff, my husband, is helping me with this, and he's kind of like my co-host. How's everyone doing? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's here too, so I can't really see your questions, so he's going to like shout out questions to me um, as we go. So feel free to ask. All right, so now I'm just going to like add in a grid, and this is going to kind of give me a well, basic structure so I can add all those like crevices. What would you call those, I don't know, like pockets <laughs> in a waffle? I'm not sure. You guys might have something more creative to say, but that's what I'm calling them. Okay, so I've got that, and now I gotta figure out how to make them look like they're depressed into the waffle. I'm gonna definitely start by adding like this part that sticks up for each one is like kind of thicker. And, and then so far, YouTube's definitely agreeing on pockets. Pockets. All right, YouTube. I'm with you. I think that's pocket. That's where like all the butter and the syrup fall into and like makes the waffle so awesome. Okay, cool. So that's good. I'm just, I don't have to erase all these lines away, but I am. It's just a sketch, so. We're live everywhere. Cool, I think we're live everywhere. So if you're just tuning in, I'm illustrating some waffles today for my ABC book that I'm working on for making art every day. Um, we're doing W. I've been doing them all out of order. I think today is M N. No, and O, N or O today. Um, I forget, because I'm doing them all out of order. <laughs> Cutie Doodle asked, where can we get the brushes? So the brushes are my own creations and I sell them at bardobrush.com. So I have this set and many others there. 
And then YouTube and Instagram has been asking about your pencil. As I get, <laughs> I always get asked about my pencil. This is a decal from a company called D Brand, and you can find it at dbrand.com. I'm working with the iPad Pro from late 2018 and the Apple Pencil 2. Okay. My little pockets are not like evenly spaced or sized, but that's okay. It adds to the charm, <laughs> makes it look hand drawn. Um, and then there's usually like a, you know, that part where the waffle iron comes together and splooges out the side. <laughs> there, I'm gonna like, I don't know. Well, we're, I'm gonna worry about this waffle in a minute. I'm gonna focus on this one for now. So I need to add like a pat of butter. So I'm just gonna kind of draw that in, maybe make that kind of 3D as well. I'm just gonna give it some height there. Kind of, hopefully it's a little melty. And then... Uh, Gia Combo was actually asking on YouTube, um, I'm wondering how I can jump into Procreate without any or very little drawing experience. Oh, jumping in is the right term to use. Um, I would recommend starting with a tutorial, which I have a really good one for Procreate. Uh, it's called Intro to Procreate, and you can find that um, on my website um, at bardobrush.com slash tutorials or on my YouTube channel, which is um, called Bardo Brush. And it kind of goes over everything new and takes you through a drawing something, like you get to draw some fruit. It's really easy uh, and it's just, you just got to start, <laughs> honestly. That's kind of how I got started. Like I have a uh, creative background, but I didn't really start getting into illustration until uh, after my son was born and he's six. And that's when I found Procreate and it changed my life. I just love it. So yeah, just start, just start, get a tutorial, get a bunch of tutorials and just draw something every day and the more you do it the better you get and the more comfortable you get with the software because it's hard it's hard to develop a drawing skills but it's also hard to like when you're not familiar with the software too so both of those things are something to learn in the beginning okay so that looks pretty good maybe i'll this one luckily i don't have to add too much detail to so i'm just gonna add that in i don't even think i get to the second pocket there all right so that's Okay, and then for these to look, this is going to be challenging, I know. Um, for these to look like they're going down, I'm just going to add some like 3D kind of structure there, if that makes sense. So that's like going down into the waffle. Trying to keep it as loose as possible. I don't want to spend like too much time on the sketch. It's just to give me, um, just to give me gui a guide as I am working on this and adding the color and all the details and everything. Cool. Okay, yeah, I mean, you can kind of see it's, it's looking like a waffle. Um, so I think I'm just gonna start from there. I think my plate should maybe go higher. This one, this waffle looks like it's falling off a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, and then I don't know exactly what the text is gonna look like in the end, but I'll add it to this sketch too. I usually do the lettering last once I decide like what kind of lettering I wanna do. If I wanna just keep it simple or do something more involved. Oops. All right. Okay, so that's my sketch. So now I'm gonna turn off this layer with the like rough sketch and I'm gonna reduce the opacity of my new sketch to like, I usually keep it pretty light, just light enough so that I can still see it. And then I always, almost always turn that layer to multiply blend mode so that no matter what I put underneath it, I can still see my sketch. So I'm gonna add a layer uh, below my sketch layer. That one I always keep on top as I'm working. And now I'm gonna to start to add the basic shapes of these waffles and the plate and everything like that. So let's see, waffle color. Hmm. I always think it's really helpful to oops, look at 
a reference photo, especially when you're unsure of like lighting, color, and sh anything really. So um, I use split screen view for that. So I pull up the dock just by dragging up there and then I drag Safari over to the side. It pops over there and there you go. I was drawing bathtub earlier. <laughs> um, so I just type in waffles and well, I could have done round waffles. I did a square one. Even though our waffle maker is round. I don't know why I thought of squares. I, the, the waffles I had growing up were always square. We had a square one. So I think that's why. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this just gives me an idea of what colors I'm going to use. So I think I was pretty on it with that kind of yellowy, orangey color. Okay, so now to do my basic shapes. Um, and hopefully you guys can all... How's Instagram looking? Can we still see what's going on? Uh, most. Most, most of, it. of it. Sorry, guys. But you can go over to YouTube and I think see it all in its full glory here in horizontal yes. mode. So, yes. um, Which is the Bardo Brush YouTube channel. So I'm using Opaque Round from Gouache Paintbox. And this is like a very smooth edge brush. So I use it a lot for just establishing the basic shapes when I don't want any texture on the edges of those shapes. So that's what I'm doing. And I just, I'm not worrying about any, whoops, detail or anything like that. I'm just establishing that basic shape. Going back, Sheila asked, uh, what does multiply blend mode mean? What does it do to the layer? Oh, good question. Um, so when you turn on, so there's all these different blend modes and let me add something like here. I'm, okay, so I added a new layer over this layer. And if you go to this little N and then you just scroll through, you can see each of these modes has a different effect. and they affect the way that the two layers uh, relate to each other, I guess you could say. Like multiply will make wherever they overlap darken, um, and then each of the blend modes do something different. So the best way to get to know them is just to like scroll through and see what they do. Usually the ones near the top of the list darken, and then below normal, which is what it normally is, they lighten, and then there's some other things that do stuff with color and stuff like that. So. That's what it does, it just darkens anything that overlaps. That's why I use it for my sketches because it'll make the sketch always look dark. Let me delete that. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> I gotta find a better way of explaining. Um, actually, I could probably just fill this. Boop, easy. So I just drag the color into the shape and then it fills it like that. Fills it all up. And then I'm gonna do the other waffle on another layer because I, when I do that, it makes it easier for me to add shading and stuff later. So, let me get these angles right. All right, cool. And I don't have to draw the whole thing, only what's actually showing underneath that other waffle. Okay, so I've got my two waffles, like a main waffle shape. Um, I'm also gonna go ahead and add the plate shape. So I'm gonna do a layer underneath the other two. And I think the color, I, I created a color, kind of a color plan, which is what this thumbnail was. So I'm just gonna like put it up there and I can turn it on and off to reference it. So I can just select that color, turn it off and my colors don't always follow what I decide in the beginning, but it helps to kind of have a little bit of a color plan when you're doing your like really rough sketch. Actually, I'll just fill that in. Oops. Okay, so I didn't fill all the way in because my shape isn't closed and I couldn't see that. So there we go, now it is. Cool. Okay, so looks pretty good. Just as an aside, Gunnar was asking on YouTube how to draw bent fingers more because I'm seriously struggling with them. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I have um, fingers and hands are really difficult. I will say that they take a lot of practice. Um, 
And I actually have a series uh, called People Skills, which goes through all the different like body parts and how and, and teaches you how to draw each of them. So if you go to my YouTube channel and look for anything in the People Skills series, you'll find those. And at bardobrush.com slash people, um, there are like lessons and assignments and things like that. So you can kind of take that at your pace and um, learn those things. But I do have a video on fingers and it does talk about like observing your own finger at different angles and how to bend it and stuff like that. Um, and then there's a second one on hands. So I did hands and fingers as two separate videos because hands are just so crazy. <laughs> like they're hard to do. They take a lot of practice. So well, check that out. Added that link too for everyone. Oh, cool. In, uh, in Good job. Everywhere. Jeff put the link in to the YouTube or other everything. everything. Cool. Yeah, wow, everything we're so techie. <laughs> we're so techie, you guys. Um, I'm going to add uh, my butter as well. Sometimes it's just easier to just do all the basic shapes before moving on to like adding any detail and shading and stuff. So I'm gonna do the butter. Kind of has some rounded edges cause it's a little melty. Okay. All right, so those are the main shapes. Um, I'm gonna do the syrup last, so I'm not gonna worry about that yet. Uh, so now I'm gonna get to work on this waffle and this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this layer and we create a layer above it. So this is the one with the, the top waffle and I'm going to turn it into a clipping mask. So I tap on it, click, tap, clipping mask. And now anything I draw is going to be confined to that layer. So I'm not gonna draw over the edges or anything like that. Um, and then I gotta decide which way the light is coming from because one of these edges should be darker. So I think I'm just gonna, uh, I think I wanna darken all these edges. So <laughs> I don't know, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna go darker, I'm gonna darken this edge here. Uh, you got me laughing over here, Chloe. I just wanted to pop in with this. She says, why do all the Procreate YouTubers have a mini potted plant? Usually, <laughs> well, well, and you're missing one piece. I am. Um, usually they have a bit of old tech in frame. Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's funny I just added the plant today well yesterday was my first live video and like the desk looked really plain so I was like oh I have this little plant and it was just like I haven't even potted it yet there's the label and I didn't have a pot so this is a nice cream dish there we go I'm trying to judge it up for you guys I got dirt ah, I got dirt everywhere uh, uh, thanks Chloe that was hilarious yeah. uh, I appreciate it <laughs> okay there we go. <laughs> My bad. Nice and dirty. Okay, so now I'm shading this side too. Uh, and on Instagram, the strawberry nugget was just saying, I love how you describe everything in detail. Makes oh. it so easy to follow along. You're welcome. I'm glad it's helpful. Okay, so now I'm going to start shading inside. It's going to be a, um, a little monotonous, so just like Hit me up with questions so you guys don't get bored just watching me like shade in these little things. I go a little darker. And let's make, okay, so I think probably my plan of attack here is to just fill these in. And it's gonna be hard to like get exactly on the edges. So I'm gonna do, a really easy shortcut, which is to draw it in really crappily like that. It's not anywhere close to it. And then erase. And it's so much easier than trying to like get it exactly perfect and on the lines and stuff like that. So that is what I'm doing. Uh, Greg over on YouTube is asking, how long does it usually take for you to make a completed drawing? Um, It really depends. Um, It really depends on the drawing. I would say like, I don't know, an hour. La yesterday we were drawing for like two hours, but I go a little slower when I'm on, you know, video because I'm trying to like explain everything and stuff like that. But it really depends. And a cool way to see how, you know, how much time you've spent on stuff is if you go to the actions menu under canvas and go to canvas information, and then you go to statistics. And you can see I've spent 21 minutes on this drawing already. So, um, so yeah, it just depends on the level of detail 
that I'm doing in a drawing and how many like different parts and different things there are to draw. I probably like, like the reason I probably spent so long on my drawing yesterday was not just because I was on video, but because I drew like six animals as well. So if I was just drawing one animal, of course, that would be a lot less time. All right, so to speed this up, I think I'm gonna go through and just fill these in loosely and then I'll go back with the eraser all at once. This is like assembly line style. Uh, Winnie Gustafson asked uh, Hi, Winnie. Uh, a good question. I find that blended options change color when I merge my layers down. Yeah, uh, oh. Tips? Like um, maybe you can, I'm gonna ask you like, like uh, they look okay when they're on separate layers and then they change when you merge them, is that right? Answer the, uh, if you want to answer that, then I can respond again. Okay. Uh, and Julia Malik Designs asked, do you guys have a PO box that we can send gifts to? Uh, Aww. We, we, <laughs> uh, she wanted to send Lisa a painted jacket. So oh my god! Really <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like over here like, wow. Really um, um, that is amazing. so generous. Uh, <laughs> Either way, Julia, just shoot us a message on the website. We'll chat later. Yeah. Um, but that's just the sweetest thing ever. Oh, anyway. you are adorably sweet. Like, I, I'm, yeah, that's awesome. I think it's at the bottom of my emails, the PO box. But yeah, shoot me a message, and we'll we'll chat. You're so sweet. Uh, Rosemary Stevenson's asking, what brushes are you using right now? It's yeah. Really awesome, yeah. I'm using brush. So this whole series of illustrations for my alphabet book. I am using um, gouache paint box. It's my, it's one of my most popular sets, honestly. People like that's, I. it's one of the first ones I made way back in the day. Um, whoops. But I just released, I've released, I think I've updated it. This is the third iteration of that set. So every time there's like some new technology that Procreate releases, I can do like a big update for it. And so I just did that. Um, like a month ago. And so that's what this is right now. So it's the update to gouache paint box, which you, once you buy it once, you always get the updates for free. So that's kind of cool. But the brush I'm using from that set is called Opaque Round. And it's just a nice brush for doing like smooth edged shapes. Oops, I need my eraser. And I'm using the same thing for the eraser too. That's the one from this set that I usually erase with. So you can see, even though there's like a lot of detail to do for this, doing like the method where I erase away definitely helps speed things up. And it also helps you get like nice sharp corners, which I mean, waffles aren't this like sharp <laughs> core, like they're not that structured, they're a little softer than this, but it's okay. This is my, uh, my choice when I'm choosing to stylize this. Uh, when you said yes, by the way. Yes, okay. Um. It depends on a few things. I have had that happen to me before. Um, and sometimes it depends on whether certain things are grouped together. Um, yeah, I, I don't, oops, I don't have, I should have probably done this part on another layer. Um, I don't have a good answer because I haven't like spent time figuring out why that happens in detail. So I'm sorry, <laughs> but maybe next time that happens to me, I'm gonna observe a little bit closer and see what it was that maybe caused that to happen. So here I'm running into a problem because I put this shading and this shading on the same layer and I accidentally overlapped it, but that's okay because I'll just grab this color and paint over it and then I can erase. A good thing just to, this there. is a great question actually about your eraser. Um, yeah. What are the brush settings on your eraser? My kids changed it up when they got a hold of my iPad ones. It's never worked the same as what I initially purchased. Ah, them. well, the cool thing about eraser is that you can use any brush you want as an eraser. So they might have just, like if you've never clicked into there, maybe that's what's going on, but you can choose any brush you want as the eraser. So I'm choosing to use the same brush I'm using to draw with because it's it matches what I'm the you know the brush strokes that I'm using so I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but um, yeah. 
the end, uh, here's a really good one uh, that Amy was asking on YouTube. Um, I have difficulties getting the brushes to work as bright colors as you've shown us. Hmm. Please tell me if you've adjusted uh, in individual brush settings. No. you. Yeah, that... Interesting. I wonder what that looks like on your end. Um, why they're not showing up as bright. Like, they should match whatever color you have selected here. And most of the colors I choose, I am usually, like, in this range... Because if I go over, you know, anywhere else, it's going to be like more dull. And I, in particular, like really saturated colors. So no, there shouldn't real, and there shouldn't really be any settings that affect the way color is represented. I know on some of my brushes, depending on the set, color does change. You know, versus the from the color you select here, like on the multi-tonal markers, but um. No, that's really interesting. I'm not sure why that might be happening. And uh, Brian, Brian uh, on uh, Facebook's asking what our camera setup is, and uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's super not fancy. <laughs> no, well, we have we have I have an overhead rig, which is like um, it's like a lighting stand, and then a bar that comes out over it, and then I have like a um, like a clampy thing for my phone it's a technical term to hold the phone so I'm just on my iPhone right now and we get really good light in our office studio um, so we don't even have lighting set up right now but I do have a lighting set up for when I do videos but it's really pretty in here right now so I don't have to I hope that helps but I also have where's that give me that hold on I also have this thing <laughs> which clamps onto your desk and then holds your iPhone. I got that on Amazon. So you can like just clamp it to the edge of your desk and record yourself drawing if you wanted to like share, you know, your drawing process with people online. That's a good one. They're usually called like iPhone stand, iPhone clamp or desk thing. I don't know. Um, cool. So I'm going to, I'm looking at this now and I, the waffle is too far this way. So I'm just going to select those layers so the one with the butter, the shading, and then that waffle shape. And I'm just gonna like move it over so it's not so, looks like it's falling off the edge. <laughs> now my sketch is looking pretty weird. So I'm just gonna like, uh, actually I'm not gonna do that yet. I'll go back and do that later, maybe. We'll see. Um, Cause then I don't have my sketch to use as a guide. Back door. <laughs> you can hear my alarm making noise. Okay, I'm going to do this layer too, the other waffle. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to this layer, create another layer right above it. Um, I'm going to turn that into a clipping mask. I don't know if you can hear my daughter crying in the background. Oh, sorry. She's hanging out with grandma right now and they're, they just got back from a walk. Today's been a day, you guys. Like... I was supposed to go live um, much earlier, like in the morning time, but we had some last minute childcare, babysitting changes, and then my daughter was like super duper duper clingy to me, so yeah, she would refuse, yeah, she just was in a mood, definitely in a mood, um, so we didn't get to do that this morning, so we're on this afternoon, but um yeah, it's been interesting with all the time my two kids are getting to spend together <laughs> that they don't usually because he's in school. Well, we're but. lucky that our uh, our childcare even is basically isol the only other person that's like isolated with us, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we have Jeff's mom that helps watch the kids. And um, she doesn't, you know, she, she lives alone and she doesn't really go places. Our other babysitter... We decided just to kind of keep it to one person so less people around and, you know, be as socially isolated as possible. So that it's been interesting kind of figuring that all out with kids and like and uh, having enough activities to keep them entertained and whatnot. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Rosemary Stevenson over on Facebook asked, do you have an art background uh, before you started doing Procreate? Uh, yeah, I do. Actually, I have been doing creative things my whole life. And, um, 
I, I use this color. Sorry, I trailed off there. Um, I went when I went to college. It was for uh, graphic design and photography, so that was like my academic background. Um, but I didn't really focus a ton on drawing. Sorry, I'm just shading at the bottom of this now, and I'm gonna go back and erase a bunch of stuff. Um, but I've like spent my whole life making things, sewing, um, work, working with wood, all kinds of crafts. I've done sculpture. I've done, me, my husband and I have done some really cool art installations. So we have like, we've got the, we were wedding photographers for 11 years. We're still doing that a little bit, but not so much anymore. Um, so yeah. I have a very creative background, but I have been probably only focused on the drawing skills for like the past six years, five, six years. In 2016 was when I really, you know, buckled down and like decided that I was going to invest time in learning to draw. And that's when I did my first kind of making art every day thing before making art every day existed. I just called it art every day. And I drew something every day that I could. Um, and I did pretty pretty well. Uh, <laughs> and then I got pregnant with my daughter. And it was actually, it was, it was a hard pregnancy. It was lots of struggles and lots of emotion. Um, but having that drawing as like an outlet actually really helped me out a lot. I don't know why I just call you that. Um, it helped me out a lot to express like what I was feeling during that time. So that's one of the reasons why I started making art every day was because of that experience that I had and how helpful and impactful having, being able to draw and express myself that way was in my life. And I wanted to share that with other people. And so that's why I started making art every day because I think we all have something inside us we want to express, but we might not have the skills to do it in the way that we want so the more you do it the more you draw the better you'll get and you'll be able to put out on paper or screen what is inside your mind okay, really good one. thanks <laughs> um where was where did i just go cool that's looking pretty good i'm gonna do this one too Um, over on Instagram, they're just asking more questions of going over how, multiple layers again. They're just talking about how awesome any specific questions. Yeah, um, we don't have. Oh, we do have a lot. We do have a really specific question. Just mm -hmm. pop up. Mm -hmm. Will you be resuming the People Skills series on YouTube? <laughs> that question must be from the YouTube people. <laughs> uh, no, that was on Instagram. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually on Instagram. Uh, asking about it. Yes, um, yes, <laughs> probably not soon. I am seven, eight months pregnant. I have two months left on this pregnancy, and then I'm going to have a baby. I mean, that's usually what happens at the end. Um, <laughs> so I know I probably don't have time to finish it until after that, but I do want to finish it, and I actually want to expand on it and get more into, like, the stylization of people, which I did more when we were doing, like, eyes, eyes and nose and mouth and, like, those parts, and it was harder to do once you get to like hands because they're so like technically difficult to draw and you have to technically kind of master those things before you can stylize it. So yeah, I want to expand on that like stylization part uh, of that series. So the answer is yes, but not anytime soon. <laughs> so keep working on the, on the skills that are there so far. <laughs> Get good at that, and then uh, the next one is gonna be legs. Legs, and then bodies, like the whole body, and then posing. And then I probably will get into like stylization part of it. Cool. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I've got enough shading going on. I think I'm all right to like get rid of my sketch for now so I can like move that waffle over. So I'm selecting all the top waffle layers and then I'm just gonna move it here. Okay, so now that I've got kind of some basic shading, I'm gonna add 
Well, now that I've turned my sketch off, it kind of is a little bit easier to see where maybe some like quote unquote problem areas are. It's only a problem if you think it is, <laughs> but I'm gonna just erase. Oops, I think I need to go to the one, that layer, which is the one with the like bottoms of the waffle pockets as we decided they're called. Maybe here too. Now YouTube is asking uh, what time it is. It's 2.33 p.m. here in California. Yep, 2.33. Uh, it's afternoon. And I'm hoping next time I do it, I can do like a morning one so that maybe like Europe people can see it while it's still like not in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, okay, so now that I'm pretty happy with that, um, obviously there's not enough definition. So now it's time to add some like actual shading, especially like to give definition between these two waffles. So I think I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with the top waffle. I'm gonna go to, what layer? This one, the one with the like sides. Um, and sorry, I'm just deciding how I wanna do it right now. I'm gonna turn on alpha lock on that layer and then I'm going to add some texture first with uh, my brush stroke brushes and I created there's four different ones in this set and these brushes give flat areas of color um, kind of like painterly brush stroke texture so I'll show you what that looks like so right now it looks like that I'll probably go back and fix that later but um, so I'm gonna select this color and then I'll make the brush a bit bigger and then just add some strokes kind of following yeah kind of getting messed up there, but that's okay. So we get kind of some nice, you kind of see that it's really subtle, but it's like kind of makes it look like it's painted. It has some like brush stroke texture. So that's what that, that is for. And I think on the side of the waffle, what is it like? It has a dark line around the edge. So maybe I'll I'll just go get it like a darker, warmer. Oops. And just add like a little stripey there. Okay, yeah. It gives it the impression of a waffle. Um, and then usually if things touch each other um, that are different colors, I try to put those on different layers, but I didn't in this case. So now I kind of have to fix this because I'm, uh, I'm gonna select this color I'm going to get my opaque round brush and just, what am I doing? There we go. Probably could have done another clipping mask for this, but it's okay. There we go, all better. And when I'm working on this one, so that same thing doesn't happen, I think I'm just gonna select right there. And just that. There we go. So now I'll, when I get to this edge and I'm doing brush strokes, it's not going to interfere with this side. Um, usually I do different in the work in the layers so I don't have that issue, but there's other ways to do it. Okay, so I'm getting this color right here. I'm getting light brush strokes again. That's the brush I'm using to add that brush strokey texture. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm just going to paint that in. Awesome. Good. So uh, over in Europe, it looks like it is uh, 10.30 for some folks. Okay. So, you know, Evening. some people might be up. I usually am that late. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go Should to we bed. talk about how late we're up working? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're usually we're, up pretty late. We're totally not up till midnight working most yeah. evenings, especially during the week. Somebody yeah, asked me late yesterday, like, how do I... Um, how's my productivity and how do I do so much... <laughs> So they don't really have evenings. Yeah, <laughs> I usually yeah. usually are like up until midnight and then go to bed, which is not, it's not a good habit to get into. Let me tell you that. I probably should be getting more sleep and have like relaxing evenings, but you know, you do what you gotta do. When you have kids and it's busy, sometimes you don't get as productive during the day. We do have childcare, which helps out a ton. Um, you know, with actually like getting things done. Um, but still, home, being home all, like working from home is great because you can work whenever, 
But then there's also like home things taking away your attention. So it's a challenge. Talking about challenges, uh, Michelle Park over on Facebook was asking, mm -hmm. will making art every day continue after you give birth? Oh, for sure. Making art every day is happening for the entire year. <laughs> like we're plan we're trying to plan ahead and get as much stuff done as we can um so that that remains uninterrupted. Like I that's the one thing that like has helped me. It's like you guys are doing making art every day and um participating in that and challenging yourself to draw every day. And I don't I don't actually draw every day. Um, even though I want to, <laughs> but doing, running this project is my big challenge. Like, that's my big creative challenge that I do. Um, so, you know, writing something motivational to you guys every week. So trying to flex my writing muscles and trying to make tutorials. Like it's all a big creative challenge. Um, I don't really like what I'm doing right now. So that's like been my like creative challenge to myself, which definitely has been. I've learned a lot. I started it last year at the beginning of 20, what's the last year? 19, beginning of 2019. So I'm just adding a little brush strokey texture. So yeah, so I'm trying to get that all, get some stuff prepped ahead of time so that I can give birth and be with my baby and spend time and not have to worry about work because I'm the type of person that always worries about work. Always. <laughs> you can ask Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> she worries way too much about work. Right yeah. My, I love my work a lot, and I really invest a lot of... Um, oops, I think I need to turn on clipping masks there. Or not. Alpha lock. I have on alpha lock on this layer. Yeah. I put a lot into my work. Yeah. But it's very satisfying, and... I really enjoy it. So. And talking about what you're just doing between alpha lock, clipping mask, and yes, we've got a tutorial on it, but it's always one of those areas that's tricky. Uh, Winnie just asked, uh, and by the way, there's tons of other questions and I'm gonna keep getting to them as we kind of go through this. So don't, don't think you're not seen, uh, everybody. But yeah, so please explain clipping mask again, Lisa. Yep. I played you tutorials many times, but it's not sinking in. Um, yeah, so a clipping mask, um, I will show you real quick over here with two layers. So I'm gonna draw a shape, I'll do blue, uh, over here in a layer. Yeah, I created a new layer, okay. So here is a clipping mask, or sorry, this, I'm just drawing a shape and another shape just so I can show you. Um, so these are these shapes I made. And if I create a new layer right above these shapes and I set that layer to a clipping mask. Now, anything that I draw, so I'm gonna grab a darker color so you can see. If I draw over here, like it's still, like I'm drawing it, but you can't see it because um, you will only see where I have already drawn. Like there's, you can pretend there's imaginary like paper or something like blocking all the other areas. So you, there's something there, but it's being blocked. So this can be handy when you want to add shading that doesn't like go over the edge of it. You know, you only want to go to the edge of the shape you already drew. Um, so that's what a clipping mask is. But the great thing about the clipping mask is you can edit it independently. You can, you know, adjust the coloring, you can adjust the opacity, like it's still its own layer. You can erase parts of it. Whereas if you used alpha mask, which I'll show you that real, actually I'll just delete the clipping mask. So alpha mat, alpha mat, alpha lock, sorry, alpha lock. So if I turn that on, I'll swipe to the right with two fingers. So that's doing the same thing, but on the same, whoops, on the same layer. So I can only draw within the confines of this shape and it's all on the same layer. So I don't have that flexibility where I can like edit the, you know, this bl dark blue, change the color, erase, like I can't erase it now, like I'll erase that, whatever's on that layer. So, and you might use different, the, the different ones for different reasons. But um, sometimes if I know I'm not gonna need to edit it, I'll just use alpha lock to save my layer count. So yeah, I hope, let me know if that doesn't explain it and I can maybe try and explain it a little better, but. Okay, where was I at? I don't know. Oh yeah, I wanna add some, um, some additional texture to the waffle. 
um, which I'm gonna use with my gouache grain brushes. So there's four brushes, three brushes that add some grainy texture to your artwork. So it kind of emulates maybe like the texture of the paper. Um, I also use these for shading sometimes. So what layer am I on? Let's start with this one, which is like all these like top parts. And I'm gonna go like a tiny bit darker. And it's, it's really subtle, but it does make a big difference um, just to give it a little bit of painterly realism and not make it look like it's a flat digital illustration. So I'm just like lightly adding some of that grainy texture to the waffle. And it does make it look a lot more interesting. I should show you, um, do I, did I save it? Hold on, let me see. I don't think I did, no. Uh, Angelina real quick was asking. Uh, I'll show you later. What do you draw to brighten your mood? Oh, uh, probably like a cactus or a rainbow. <laughs> Something with a lot of color. Cactus. Oh my God, a cactus, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like that's kind of like when I don't know what else to draw, that's kind of like my go-to. I don't know, like happy things usually, or sometimes people, not people, but like little faces that look happy, little characters. Uh, also doing animation, like animation to me is just so fun um, that it just makes me happy anytime I make one because it's just, it's just so cool. And I have some animation tutorials on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna make a new one soon because Procreate came out with an update to all their animation tools. So that's exciting. It's coming. I got tutorials planned. <laughs> I will get to them. It's been a little crazy around here getting ready for this baby and all the, we've been doing a lot of changes around our house, like organizing things and like getting our office remodel finished up. We're almost there. If you follow me on Instagram, you might've seen some of the behind the scenes of that. Um, so yeah, lots of cool stuff in the works. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit darker color, maybe, no. I kinda wanna add some, I'm gonna use my brush stroke brush for this, I think. Uh, Cause I wanna, there we go, yeah. So you can kinda see like it's a different color on one side of that, if that makes sense. A lot of repetition with this artwork. So because I'm using a clipping mask and actually have alpha lock turned on this layer, um, I can very easily just like, boop, boop, boop. I don't have to be like exact. I could just paint over that and it's easy. That's why Alpha Lock is awesome. Oops, I didn't add any texture to that one. I'll come back around and do it. Did I get them all? All right, let's add some texture to this bad boy. The gouache grain brush. There we go. Okay, so waffles looking pretty good. Um, I need to do this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that <coughs> now, which I think is this layer. So I'm turning on alpha lock so that all my brush strokey texture will stay confined to that layer. So I can just very easily just and loosely add some brush strokes. I'm kind of messing up that side, but I kind of mentioned that earlier in the video about how I can fix that by just painting over it with opaque round. There we go to get rid of it instead of like erasing. And then I'm gonna do this side by just selecting that area and then that whole shape. And now I can add brush stroke texture right there. Uh, this is the, I'm using deep edge brush stroke. It's just a little more pronounced with that brush stroke texture. You get a lot more of that. It's like it's yeah, more edges. 
And then I also have to add the um, dark line, so I'm gonna choose a darker color. And make the brush a little thinner. Okay, and I forgot, I need to do this side. Um, so actually what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna invert this selection. So if I tap and hold the selection tool, I can invert it. And now I have the other side selected, so that makes that really easy to add that dark line without touching that side, if that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, Brett Ratz over on uh, Instagram was asking, I missed the beginning of this, I didn't see how you drew the little squares inside the waffle. Oh, yeah, I would, it's it's going to stay on Instagram. Yeah, it'll be safe. It'll, it'll be, be safe, safe for 24 safe. hours, so maybe go back and watch the beginning, and you'll see how I did that, because I think it would be hard to explain <laughs> without, like, seeing it. So go back and watch that part. Okay, I'm gonna do some texture here. I bet there should be like a piece there, right? It looks blank. And it, be. Yeah, I think I need to I add. Her. Well, oops, see I didn't have alpha lock turned on and now I'm like, what? So let me undo that. Alpha lock, and now I can only draw within the confines of that shape. And whoever just asked that about the the squares you might get a glimpse of it here um how did i do it okay i'm on this layer i gotta turn off alpha lock i gotta select that color i've been using and i'm using my opaque round brush which is just a nice flat brush i had some sketching to help me but i didn't actually sketch that part so i'm just gonna like freehand it so i'm just kind of drawing where I think that might be, I think, <laughs> maybe like that, and then I'm erasing it away. It's hard because it's only like a part of it. Um, and then for the like bottom part of the little pocket, I'm doing this. So I'm just filling it in and then erasing away like where the top part of that like waffle would be. This is, yeah, you'll want to probably go back and watch the video because it's a little hard to see in this little dot. But yeah, I think that that's pretty good. Over here looks kind of weird. I'm not trying to go for perfection here. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. The probably only thing I want to do is add some more shading to the bottom waffle because it would be darker because it's underneath something. So for that, I am going... We're off on Insta, just so you know. Okay, so can we're we? Back, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Instagram probably a good place for that to cut off because I just finished that part. Um, but we're gonna bring Instagram back on. I guess we've been doing this for an hour because <laughs> Instagram cuts off after an hour. Um, so we're gonna bring them back. I'm gonna drink my tea. Let me know. Are we back? That'll be a minute for Instagram. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, so I'm going to use the multiply blend mode that we were talking about earlier. I'm going to create a layer in between the two waffles. Um, and then probably I'm going to, hmm, I'm going to turn on multiply blend mode first. Then I can really see exactly what's happening. So it's going to basically, whatever I draw on this layer will darken all the layers underneath it. But maybe not explaining it the best way. But I'm using this to add a shadow. So imagine a shadow on something darkens everything the shadow is on. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I think I'm going to use the soft gouache grain brush. And I don't know if the color I have selected is too dark. You kind of got to play around with it. So if you, here, if I do it like this, you can see like it's dark, making everything underneath it dark. If that makes sense which actually doesn't look too bad. Um, okay, so it's gonna be hard for me to get the shadows exactly right without like going over the edges. So in this case, I can't really use clipping mask or alpha lock because it's affecting many layers here. Well, maybe I can, hold on, let me try it. Oh, I can, look at that. <laughs> okay, so that worked because 
I can use a clipping mask um, because these two layers are also clipped. So any layer that's right above it will be clipped to the same <laughs> layer. What? I, so I'm laughing because I know it's funny. Uh, Freckle <laughs> knows what's funny, uh, but Freckle was asking earlier uh, when you're going to drink your coffee. Oh. Uh, but it is not coffee. It's tea. I don't like coffee. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love tea. Um, but I've never got a taste for coffee and it like sometimes when Jeff buys the both of us, you know, he gets me a tea and him a coffee and then I accidentally drink his and I feel like I just want to die because it's so gross. <laughs> I don't like it. So and then we're back on Insta. Cool. Welcome back, Instagram. Um, I'm using, uh, oh, it's too dark. I'm adding some shading to... This bottom waffle. I don't know if I want to make the whole thing darker or not. I don't know. Maybe. So what I, I'm going to try erasing some of this shading and see. If, shading when you don't have a reference to go off of can be difficult. Because you're like, oh, does that look good? Maybe I'll just like, if I get a lighter color and paint that in. That'll lighten certain parts of it. I don't know. Uh, Linda Rode over on Facebook's asking, what brush are you drawing with right now? Um, so I am using the soft gouache grain brush from, uh, from my gouache paint box set. And this was designed to add grain to like a textury painterly grain to your um, drawings which is like what all this like if you can see all this like grain texture but I'm also I also use it for as a shader quite often so that's what I'm doing right now is I'm using that as a shader and I'm probably not explaining this too well because it's a little complicated I don't know I'm choosing a darker color and I'm gonna come in right where Whenever two things are like right on top of each other, you need to have like a much darker shadow right at that edge. And so that's kind of what I'm doing now. And if you'd make the shadow too big, it'll look like the object is like floating way high above the other thing. Yeah. So you can kind of kind of see what I mean. So and that kind of looks like it's floating a little bit, but I'm not gonna beat myself up too bad about this like shadow and how it looks and stuff. So I think that is fine. Um, so where do I wanna go next? Um, maybe I'll do the butter. So I'm gonna go to my butter layer and I might just do, I'll do a clipping mask again. So I'm gonna add a layer above, turn it into a clipping mask. And now everything I oops, draw on that layer will just be in that shape that I already drew, the butter. And we should make it a little darker on the side. I'm gonna use, actually I'm gonna use the light brush strokes because it's got kind of a softer edge and this butter would have, it would be a little softer. Making the brush bigger and the bigger I make the brush, the softer that edge is gonna get, if that makes sense. Kamar Arg over on Instagram just said, uh, I eat waffles every day. Every day? Lucky. I know. <laughs> I get waffles every day. It's like a special you, occasion in our house if we you, make waffles. You, you would be uh, our son's best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky. Um, no, we actually do an event every year on New Year's called Bacon and Waffles. And we have all our friends over. So it's New Year's Day. We don't do a big New Year's party. We do a New Year's Day breakfast for our friends. Um, and we do, we cook a ton of bacon and a ton of waffles and have a ton of toppings. And we just have all our friends over for a breakfast party. Um, and it's super fun. So that's kind of our tradition. We missed this year though, cause we went to, uh, we went, what's going on there? We went to Scotland uh, for Christmas this year to visit Jeff's family. His sister lives in Scotland. So we went out there and oops. So we didn't get to do, we were there for Christmas and New Year's, but we'll come back. We'll do it again this year. Okay, cool. 
Um, okay, so I need a shadow under the butter as well. So I'm gonna add a layer right underneath the butter. I'm gonna turn on multiply blend mode. I'm gonna choose, it's about to fall, kind of a gray. And the soft wash grain brush. That's the one I like to use for shadows. Oh. Oh, tiger fell. Yeah. <laughs> my keys tiger just fell. my keys just fell off the wall. Um, so Karen was just saying um, that I'm just wrapping up my making art everyday drawing now. It's just super fun to get to draw along, even if we're doing very different drawings. Yeah, it's been so fun this month, like seeing um everybody's different themes that they've picked and the drawings are all so different and so personal. Like usually I'll give you a prompt and we'll draw that thing. So everybody's kind of drawing the same thing, but like this month has been so personal. Like even for me, I'm drawing all this stuff that my kids like and it's really, really personal. Um, so just seeing everybody's personalities come out in this drawing, this month with drawing is really cool. Um, okay, so I'm gonna add the syrup now. I've created a layer above everything else, and I'm gonna try it with this gouache wash brush, which is kind of like a watercolory texture, because um, I think it's gonna give me like that transparency of syrup that I want, maybe. So, yeah. And this brush is a little tricky. The way that you use it is you can do one continuous. Um, like area of wash if you don't pick up your brush at all. Otherwise it will start like overlapping on the, itself. I'm not explaining it very well, but um, I wanna make a tutorial for this set and I hope I'll explain it later for that. Um, yeah, so now I've picked my brush up. So now it's not gonna join in quite right for that, but that's okay because this is gonna go. So I kind of messed up here. I didn't get it quite to the edge of the butter. So I'm gonna use Liquify. Instead of redoing the whole thing, I'm just gonna use Liquify and push it over to the edge and that's good enough for me. And then it's fine for everything else because I'm gonna go, maybe I'll create a new layer um, below the butter. For... Oh, we're losing power. No, not yet. That's one thing we keep forgetting about is like how much phone power and iPad power. All right, so. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of syrupy. <laughs> Syrup is hard to draw because it's like shiny and see-through and I gotta add some shine marks to it, which I'll, I'll make a layer on top of everything else to add some like shine marks which I'll probably use, I'll try, which one do I wanna use? I'm gonna try Dry Supreme. It's a really beautiful dry brush. I'm gonna use it at a small size and then draw what I imagine to be like the shiny parts of the syrup. My syrup probably needs to be a little darker, but I can go and add that back. I don't know. I'm not getting into the like 3D of it going into all the pockets and stuff. I just, I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time for that. And I, I have to finish my book and get it ordered. So I'm not gonna worry myself about it. I'm just gonna, it's for my kids and they will know, recognize that this is a waffle and they will love it. So that's the whole point. So I'm not worried about it. Let's see, let's get some like really Orangey, hmm. I'll try light brush strokes maybe. I'm just gonna, I don't know. Syrup is hard. I might turn on this, hold on, let me see if I like it. I'm gonna turn on multiply blend mode and that's gonna darken anything that the syrup, like all the layers beneath it. And then I'm also gonna, turn down the opacity a little bit. I don't know if this is gonna look good, but I'm trying it. That's, you know, what this is all about, <laughs> is experimenting and like trying things and seeing what works and what doesn't. I don't know if this is gonna look good or it's gonna look weird. It's kinda looking weird. That's okay. 
I think it just overall needs to be darker. I think I'm gonna blend these like dark areas a little bit. Uh, I have a brush called Thick Sticky Blender and it's great for like blending paint strokes a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just kind of like grabbing the side of it and blending one side of that brush stroke. That makes sense. So this I can, now that I'm doing syrup, I can identify that transparent liquids are kind of a problem area for me, something that I could spend time studying and working on if I wanted to. Um, that's what's kind of great about doing this. Okay, I turned on multiply blend mode on the syrup layers, and I think that helps a lot. It like darkens what's underneath it, and it makes it look like this looks like, like a syrup octopus. <laughs> so yeah, that's literally what's going on over on YouTube right now. Uh, uh, freckles are laughing my ass off. Uh, yes, it looks like syrup octopus. Uh, you called it. Uh, we concur. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't see what you guys are commenting, so you're probably like, it looks like an octopus. Yeah, or like a spider uh, is what yeah. you're saying. So yes, Hopefully it doesn't yes. freak out my daughter. She's scared of bugs. Oops. Oh, well. We're going for it, you guys. <laughs> Oops, I need a different eraser brush. <laughs> um, yeah, that's okay. If I had like spent more time on it, I could probably make it look better. But it does kind of, I mean, it looks like syrup enough. <laughs> so I'm going to call it good. It probably should be going off the back and like this whole area should connect together better. But I don't know. Maybe I'll redo it. Maybe I probably won't. So um, all right. Good enough for now. I'm gonna do the plate because I need to do that. So um, I'm gonna go to this layer. I'm gonna actually create a layer above it. Oh, okay, so I ran out of layers. Um, I'm at my maximum layer count now. Um, and I usually, I think 17 is my max for the size canvas that I have and the iPad that I have. If you run out of layers, it's due to the, if you have a high resolution canvas or you have a slow iPad, you get less layers. If you have a fast iPad, more powerful iPad, you get more layers. Um, so now I get to get creative and decide what things I can just combine and get rid of. Um, so I'm gonna, I don't need this anymore, the like thumbnail thing. I'll keep the other sketch for now. Eh, I'll keep the other sketch for now. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and merge like the bottom waffle because I don't think I'm gonna edit it anymore. So I'm just gonna take it's these layers here and pinch them all together and now that's like all one layer and that's fine and now I've gotten like another four layers for myself so I hope that makes sense um okay so I created a new layer the plates in our house are this teal and they have like a white band around the edge so that's why I'm doing it that way I, I wanted to make as many things in this book look like things in our house because I want my kids to recognize that these are, you know, you know, drawings for their, for them from their life and so, you know, so on and so forth. I, that makes sense. In fact, I, I just decided that M, M was one of the letters I was struggling with to pick something would be mermaid. And I could have just drawn a mermaid but I decided to make a mermaid in our bath. It's j I just started um, a mermaid in our bathtub. So I'm drawing a scene that looks kind of like our bathroom and our bathtub. And my daughter, she lays on her belly and puts her arms down like on the tub and her head up. And she says, I'm a mermaid. And, and so that's kind of what I'm trying to draw here. So I've just gotten a sketch started on that. So, so yeah, I want it to look like things from their experiences and their lives. And, and this one too, I did this one last night. V is for video games and this is like our little TV console. So I want it to look like stuff from their lives. Okay, where was I? We're on waffles. Okay, so I'm gonna add some shading to the plate. Um, I'll do a clipping mask. I'm a big fan of keeping everything separate as much as possible because you can always merge things together but if you draw something on the same layer, you can't separate them out. Um, so I'm gonna put my shading on another layer and I'm gonna use 
the multiply blend mode to add shadows again, just like I did for the waffle. Um, and real quick, back to the syrup as we're just kind of on it. Uh, one, and I love it, it just uh, says the, the syrup reminds, oh, this is on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, reminds me of the octopus and cooking challenge that from uh, June, well, what was that last month? Well, I don't, I'm barely even, uh, so when you put octopus plus, your plus was cooking for octopus. Oh yeah, from when we did the animals mm -hmm. month. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would have been fun. Like, that's, that would have been really cool. I like that you um, so, put that together. So, um, one other question though, back on the our syrup octopus. Yeah. How do you make the syrup so see through? Is oh, uh, <laughs> I was trying. I did, I wasn't sure exactly how I was gonna do that. Um, but the brushes I used for this part was uh, a brush called gouache wash, which is like a transparent kind of watercolor wash brush that's included in that set. So it's already transparent. Um, and then I added some darker areas to the edges. And then I turned on multiply blend mode to all those syrup layers. And then they become even more transparent and they also darken whatever's layers are underneath them. So hopefully that explanation makes sense. But yeah, using transparent brushes uh, and I, did I turn down the opacity on any of these? I might have, I forget. I might have also changed the opacity on things. So I'm adding shadows to this. Like again, like I said, right where it hits the plate, you want it to have like a much darker shadow. So that's kind of what I'm doing there. And then I think I'm gonna add some lightness to that side of the plate. So I'm just gonna do that on the same layer because I don't wanna make another layer. So I turn on alpha lock. I'm gonna select that blue teal color, choose a lighter version of it, and use the same grain brush to do that shading. Maybe this will make it look like it's a lip of the plate that goes up. Yeah, kind of, good enough. Um, and then I'm gonna add some shading to the like rim. So I'm gonna turn on alpha lock there and choose like a light gray. Same brush, smaller brush size. There we go. Cause it kind of like curves around. Our plates are, actually they're, what are they? Aluminum enamel plates? They're like metal. <laughs> and they, they're like a camping cup, but as a plate. I'm gonna do a little bit darker, I think here. I think this is okay. Yeah, what do you think? All right, I think that's pretty good um, for this waffle. So now I am going to, I want to, hmm, I definitely need to do the text, but the green background is just looking a little flat to me. Um, I've done, oh, that stupid apple thing keeps popping down. <laughs> I've done this to, let's get rid of this too. I've done this to some of my backgrounds um, in the series. Some of them I leave as just flat color, uh, but some of them I add this painterly texture to, like this XOXO. This drawing, was probably the easiest one that I did in the series because it's just like hearts and some text. But I have all this like painterly texture around it. And when I originally um, made it, I didn't have that. So you can kind of see like the difference with and without. It just adds a little bit of interest to it, I think. Makes it a little more fun and a little more painterly. So I'm gonna do that to this background too. Okay, so I have a green background. But the way that these brush stroke brushes work, you select the same color and then you draw. And if you notice, like I'm drawing on a layer, but nothing is showing. <laughs> okay, uh, that's because I'm on a layer with alpha lock. So. so let me start over. Okay, so now I've got a new layer so I can add this brush stroke texture. I can paint it and nothing is really happening. Um, and that's because the like brush stroke texture won't show up unless you create like a couple layers of um, strokes. So that is probably a really complicated way to explain 
this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that green and I'm just gonna fill that whole layer. You can't see anything that happened, but see now the whole layer is filled with green. And now I can start adding the brush stroke texture right away. In my tutorial, I will explain this much better, but that's why I added green as, as like a layer and not just using like background color. So now I'm just kind of like adding strokes. Like as I'm, if I was gonna paint this with paint, I might be like kind of following the contours like around this, you know, if, if this was white and I'm trying to paint over it with green, you know, on a piece of paper. And then kind of maybe like a curve shape. And you can make the brush strokes do whatever kind of shape you want. Sometimes, yesterday I was using them to kind of help depict the texture of fur. So I kind of followed the way that the fur might go. But there. So, so yeah, it's pretty subtle. Uh, and if I wanted the strokes to be more pronounced, I would use the deep edge brush stroke, which will show them they're like a bit more heavy. And you can see that. I think that's what I use for that XOXO one. You know, you, so you can see that there, you know, that you can see them be more pronounced than the other ones, but I think I'm just gonna stick to what I had. Redo, okay, cool. Okay, so yeah, so you can kind of see it has a nice subtle texture now, and I'm even gonna add some grain. So these two, the brush stroke brushes and the gouache grain brushes are designed to be used together. Um, so you use the brush stroke to get some strokes in there and then the grain to just add a little bit more texture. Um, I'm not changing the color at all. I'm just kind of like adding kind of randomly with light pressure, a little bit of grain. So now you can see it's got the strokes, it's got the grain, so it's got like a nice realistic texture to it. Very painterly looking. Um, we got YouTube's asking, um, how do you get your line art so perfect? Um, what do you mean? The line, like the... That you make your art, yeah. Explain what you mean and I'll answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Dragon BMA, just go ahead and, uh, yeah, if you want to ask another question a little bit more about the line art, we'd love to answer that for you. Um, okay, so yeah, so now I have that texture and you can see what it looks like before without it and with it. It's subtle, but it like makes it look even more like a painting and less like flat digital art. So I really like the way that that makes it look. Okay, so my background. So talk about those layers real quick. Um, how do you do that thing where you have one layer, the background, for example, and your other layer is the waffle or something and you're painting behind it? Um, without messing up the waffle. So they're just talking about how have you set up all of your oh, layers. Oh, sure. Um, so as you can see, I have a lot of layers that I've used for this drawing. The background is the first, you know, the bottommost layer, and then the plate, the shadow on the plate, the rim around the plate, and then we have like this waffle, and then the top waffle, and then the shading on. So like you kind of got to think of like what goes on top of each other in the drawing and what's like behind other stuff, if that makes sense. And I use layers a lot to get, maybe that's what the person that was asking about clean lines, um, to create like a really clean break, like in between this, these two areas here. So using layers to kind of separate things out makes it really easy for you to control your brush strokes and your shading and stuff like that. So hopefully that answers. If not, um, maybe if you missed the beginning of the video, you can go back and see it from the beginning, like how I built up this illustration, starting with some basic shapes, uh, just like super basic shapes, and then adding more and more detail progressively. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, okay, so I'm gonna add my text now. Um, I don't have anything in particular for like what I wanna do, oops. I'm trying to move the word waffles for like the type of lettering that I want to do. I'm, I've been trying to keep it pretty simple for this book so that I can manage making 26 illustrations in the matter of two and a half weeks or something. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing. But I did, I, I brought a book to show you guys. Um, this one is the Hand Lettering Ledger by... Mary Kate McDevitt, who is like lettering master. And it has some really great like instructions and ideas for types of lettering and stuff. So like 
combining illustration and lettering, which is kind of what this month is about and the process and stuff. I love these like representational, look, at, I love this salad one, it's so good. Um, but then there's like, you know, like sans serif lettering and serif and there's all kinds of fun stuff. So I just wanted to show you that book. It's really awesome, great resource for lettering and stuff. Um, okay, I don't know what kind of lettering I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna go back to my layout. This is the plan I made for what goes next to each other in the book. And it's next to video games. Um, sometimes I'll like match the two, whatever the spread is, like the two lettering styles will match. Sometimes they're different. Um, I think I'm just gonna do like a simple block lettering for this, kind of like what I did yesterday with Zoo. I've done that a few times, like with XOXO, Orca I did yesterday, Koi. So I'm gonna do that again. And I'll probably do it in white. Can't go wrong with white. <laughs> um, so I'm using the light brush strokes brush. And I showed you this yesterday, but this is like a really simple way to make block lettering. So basically you get like a thick brush. That's probably too thick. And, oops, I'm gonna put that layer below the sketch layer so I can still see what I'm doing. So I'm drawing um, a, a, like a line going past where the letters actually end. And I'll show you why in a second. All right. This brush is like semi-transparent, so if I want it to be a little more opaque, I'll just draw a few more strokes. And then I can take my eraser brush and just erase away that extra part and then I have some really simple, fast block lettering that takes no time at all to draw. So there's a W, really, really easy. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for these. Uh, it's kind of too fat. It's been a while since we talked about it, but uh, Izzy over on YouTube is asking, will we be getting more drawing tutorials in the future? Yeah. Um, but I think that's even a good good chance to talk about what we are planning for hopefully the end of the week. Yes. Um, so definitely more tutorials are going to be coming. We've had a lot going on here at the Bardo house, so I haven't gotten to do any in a while, um, other than I have done some on my blog. So I have some written tutorials there, which are also really great um, to check out, but not a lot of video tutorials. But what Jeff is alluding to is the fact that um, we're doing all these live videos this week to kind of like work out the kinks of how it all works, because we're kind of new to live streaming. Um, Especially since uh, some of you may not know, we're literally streaming right now. We've got two, uh, amazing Facebook groups. We've got Instagram and YouTube and we're all live on all of them. Yeah, we've time. got two <laughs> Facebook groups we're going live to, which um, are the two Facebook groups I manage, Procreate Community, which is just a general Procreate group, and then Making Art Every Day slash Bardo Brush, which is just for all things Making Art Every Day and, you know, for people that use my brushes, do my tutorials. Um, so we're going live there on my two Instagram accounts, Bardo Brush and Lisa Bardo, and my YouTube channel. <laughs> so we're going live in a lot of places. So anyway, so what I'm getting to is that um, I have a workshop that I wanna, that I did, I did it at the Alt Summit Conference a couple weeks ago for an awesome group of women. And I wanna do it online for you guys later this week. And we're thinking maybe Thursday or Friday, but we got to work out all the technical kinks. So it's 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 kind of goes over all the Procreate basics, um, and we get to draw something along the way that's really cute. And I think it's going to be really fun. And we can you guys can ask questions and stuff as you know if you're if you're there live participating. So, and if you're not already, we're going to be announcing that via email the day before. So we'll either have an email going out tomorrow or Thursday, uh, you know, at least giving you a good, hopeful 24 hours notice. So that way you guys can join in uh, and learn even more. Yeah. So be sure 
to sign up for my email newsletter, which you can find at bardobrush.com. Um, if you're on Instagram, it's in my profile. And um, there's like a little pop-up or at the bottom of this the website, like there's a footer and you can sign up there. Um, and yeah, then you'll get the email and you'll be notified about it. And, and then what's really join cool, uh, we had someone over on Instagram asking, I know that you make brushes, but if someone couldn't afford them, what would you recommend um, for the brushes that come with Procreate? Um, so yeah. just, just as a so, side note, even about the workshop. Yeah, um, so that's a great question to segue from what I just talked about because this workshop uses only built-in Procreate brushes. It doesn't use any of my brushes. I, I created it so that anybody could participate that doesn't own my brushes and they could draw exactly what I'm drawing. So, um, so yeah, so there are lots of great brushes that come with uh, Procreate and I would just experiment with those brushes and see, we'll do this in the workshop, like see what kind of marks that they, that are made uh, with each of those brushes and what you can do with them. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think that'll be cool if you participate in that. You can see that stuff. <laughs> uh, so I think I'm done with this illustration. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's a little wonky, but that's okay. I kind of like that as an art style. <laughs> We've got our like, I wonder if my kids will see this as an octopus. If I don't say anything, I'm curious. <laughs> I stir up octopus. Um, it, I feel like that's something that they would <laughs> point out. So... So yeah, maybe we'll take a few more questions if you guys have any more questions. Yeah, Luna's just asking if it'll be able to watch if you aren't live. Uh, for sure, it'll be up for 24 hours at least. Yeah, Instagram will be up for 24 hours. YouTube, it's up in, unless I decide to take it down, I think. Um, and then Facebook, I don't know about Facebook. How long yeah, is that? It's up for a bit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It'll probably be up for a while. Um, so definitely YouTube will be one of the best long-term places for this. So if you're not already subscribing uh, or not someone who's watching us on YouTube, definitely subscribe. Yeah. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Throw up a few more questions. There is one more thing I did want to show you. Um, so, which is the process I'm going through of like actually putting this book together. I'm using a company called Mix Books to do the book printing. I'm actually partnering with them and they're giving all the Making Art Everyday participants a good discount, like 40% off a book when they when they order it. So I've got a promo code that's gonna be going out for that in my email newsletter. Um, so I've been setting my book up. Let me get Safari open. And uh, just real quick, someone was asking while you're doing that, uh, what is just something to draw as a beginner? Where to start? Food, do food. Do what you love, but food is so universal and like everybody knows what it looks like and you know what it looks like like you could draw like the first thing i did in making art every day was uh, like fruit oranges strawberries cherries like that's really a good go-to they're simple shapes uh simple colors like you can go very not detailed with it and still have something that looks cool uh, so yeah cacti are also that's one of my go-to things because you can draw something really simple and it looks cool which um you will see in our workshop actually so, but yeah, food is mine. I love drawing food. I love food. So that's usually what I start with. Uh, and uh, what is the book mainly about? We did have a question. Just someone who's late in um, asking what the Yeah, book so this for. book is for making art every day. Um, I'm doing the alphabet of things my kids like, and I'm going to print it into a book to give to them. So this is a, the theme we're doing for making art every day this month. So I want to show you, let me see, my projects. So I've started, oh, that one I don't need, oops. Okay, so I've started a book that I've just been slowly adding my drawings to uh, every time I finish them because it's really satisfying to like see it in a book. So the book that I'm using, if you search for, like you go to search in mixed books and you type in blank or blank canvas, you can find this just like a blank canvas book. They have a lot of like templated books with designs and stuff like that, but for this purpose, just a blank canvas is perfect. So I'm gonna go to this one I've been working on and go to edit. And then you get to their interface where you can like drop all your pictures in. You can upload all your images. So once you like export it from Procreate as like a PNG or JPEG, 
you can import it in and then start dropping it in. I don't know what I just did. Undo. I don't know. I'll come back to that later. So here's what I've been doing. So I've got art, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Like I'm getting real close, guys, and it's very exciting. Uh, this one I finished yesterday. It's it's a small world for I. One of my kids' favorite rides and my favorite rides and Jeff's favorite ride. We all love it. Um, it's like second favorite ride. Well, close to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, koi. So. Uh, orca I did last night, so I have I still have to do M, oh, which is the mermaid I'm working on. Uh, N is going to be nature, which maybe I'll, maybe I'll do. Well, i got to finish it today, so I don't know if I'll get to do it for live. Um, so it's really cool to, like, drop them in there and, like, see, you know, how they all look together. U, V, W. So I've been doing this and on... I just had a question about X. We're almost... Uh... Oh, because, like, X is hard? Yeah, like, what letter did you use for X? XOXO. XOXO, <laughs> XOXO, hugs and kisses. Because, like, my kids do love hugs and kisses, so that was kind of an easy, like, you know, what what else would have been xylophone? Like, X is hard. X is definitely hard. Um, but you can also do, sometimes you see in ABC books, like, words that have X in them, like, exciting or, you know, you can fudge it a little bit. Nobody's going to call the police on you. Um, so I have been designing this book in on my computer, like I upload them all to my computer, but now that I've, I've never opened this website on my iPad before, so maybe I can save it, I'll like export it, share it as a PNG and save it to my camera roll. Uh, save image. And then I bet I can go and add photos. Add from phone? Ooh, no. Add from desktop? I don't know if this works on. Oh, photo library. Okay, add from desktop. Waffles. Done. And now it's uploading. And sometimes I take a minute because they're large files. So, uh, no, I don't want to autofill my book. I'm putting them in manually. So, don't show that again. No thanks. Okay, so there's the waffles, and I already made this layout like a full page under layouts here. You can choose, so if I choose that page, you can choose like what kind of layout. I'm doing like full bleed image, but if you have an image with stuff that's really close to the edge that you don't want to get cropped off, because if you do a full bleed, the, the, like an eighth of an inch will get cropped off around the edge. Um, you can use this one, so you have like a white border around it, but for me, I've kind of already accounted for that in my drawings. So so yeah, you can choose the background and then go to photos. And now I should just be able to pop that in. Yeah. Cool. V, W, X, Y, Z. So that's super exciting. So now I can save that and just keep adding them in as I go, which is like a very satisfying things to thing to do as you like work on your book. And I'm ordering these as um, the discount we're gonna have is either for the six by six book or the eight and a half by eight and a half book. I think I'm gonna order the eight and a eight, eight and a half square book so we can have like a nice size for them to have. I might order two copies, one for my son and my daughter. <laughs> um, so yeah, any any other questions, Jeff? Uh, at the end, do you merge all the layers or clipping mask? Nope, I don't. Um, I always leave. In Procreate, I leave it all like this because when you export it as like a PNG or a JPEG, it's a flat image. So there's really not a need to merge everything. Like if I did at some point, I, pr I probably won't, but if I did at some point need to go back and edit something, I have that option. So I usually just leave everything as is um, and I don't worry too much about f file size space. I just kind of get the biggest iPad possible for for our size, like hard drive size, and don't worry about it. So, any other questions? Well, I don't see any other popping up just before we take off. I think uh, that's it. Cool. Uh, but a, a huge thank you to everyone. Yeah, who thanks. By. Thanks so much for watching. Um, stay home. <laughs> stay <laughs> stay home and draw. Stay safe. Like. Do what you can to, to just stay away from people right now. 
Um, I am having a sale on all my brushes and the bundles, 15% off right now. There's no code needed. So if you were interested in trying some of the brushes, now is a good time, uh, especially for the bundles because I don't really put them on sale that much because they're already like super discounted as it is. Um, but yeah, you can get them at bardobrush.com. Gouache paint box, which is the one I've been using, is super fun. I love it. And if you're into that like painterly kind of look, mid-century art, that's a great one. So, um, so I don't know if maybe yeah, we're going you. live tomorrow again. Yeah, or? we'll go live. We'll hopefully be a little bit earlier tomorrow. We're, yeah. We'll hope for ten thirty uh, Pacific time, maybe eleven. Uh, but we're yeah, we're definitely gonna try early to yeah. uh, to say hi to to everybody. Cool. Well. Thanks for coming. Stay creative, make art, and uh, have a great day. Bye.